Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. No matter where you are in the world, I'm definitely glad to be here with you. And more importantly, I am glad you are here with me. You are tuned into the Trust and Believe Nomad Cast. I'm your host, Damon Anderson. Please like, subscribe, and follow. You can catch the visual version of this Nomad Cast on my YouTube channel at Retire Master Sergeant 20. You can follow me on Instagram at big underscore MSG underscore retire. If you're more inclined to listen when you're going to work or you're working out, or you're just chilling. You can listen to this Nomad Cast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, GL Saving, and Spreaker, to name a few. So definitely appreciate everything. I'm looking at the numbers. You know, Jay had a, Jay-Z had had a line saying men lie, women lie, numbers don't. That is so true because I'm noticing the subscriptions are increasing, the likes are increasing, the views are increasing. So I appreciate that. The downloads are increasing as well. So that tells me a couple of things. One, that you guys like the content that I'm providing. And two, um, you like the content that I'm providing. So I appreciate that. Appreciate everything. Everything, like I said, everything is from the heart. This is all real, 100% factual. It may be some things I kind of forget here and there, but that's okay. I mean, this journey has been long. But, uh, again, definitely just, again, like I stated in previous Nomad Cast, this is therapy for me, being able to kind of tell my story in my own voice. Because I, I like listening to other interviewers when they're on YouTube and other channels. And it's cool, but, you know, I was like, you know what? I got a bunch of stories to tell, experiences and everything. So, I, you know, I want to have a vessel, have a vehicle to provide that as well. So, you know, I'm glad that, you know, I'm doing it and appreciate everything. Please continue to follow. Tell a family member, tell a friend, tell a co-worker. Even if you don't like the co-worker, tell them about the Nomad Cast. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Me and Mrs. Anderson, the kids, we had one. Me and Mrs. Anderson. We kind of binge watched a bunch of shows on BET Plus and Prime and Paramount Plus and Apple TV and Plus This, Plus That. All these streaming sites, man, they are making money and it's like just a regurgitation of shows. But, you know, we like TV, so that's cool. Um, Michigan won. It was a slugfest against uh, Rutgers Saturday. We 4-0. And my Lions lost yesterday to a 66-yard field goal, which is an NFL record, by the way. 66-yard field goal, hit the daggone field goal post, bounced into the net, and uh, Baltimore ended up beating the Lions. 66 freaking yards. Now, I know most of you guys seen the replays. I heard people had already been freaking private messaging me about it, you know, talking about the Lions. You know, when the Lions lose, don't bother me. <laughs> All right. But uh, uh, it's all good, man. Still a fan. Still a fan. Hey, so today's episode on Monday Mental Combat, we're talking about being static and being stationary. Now, there are benefits to that. Pros to it, cons to it. You know, in my life, there's been times where I've been static and stationary, and there's been times where we've been, you know, mobile or modular. So, But we're just going to talk about the folks in, in life standing still not moving should they move should they not and it can be job related whatever whatever relationship related so on and so forth right but we'll get into it again appreciate all the likes follows and subscription subscriptions let's keep these numbers up and continue to do the things we need to do today is 27 september 2021 we're going to transition into monday mental combat All right, y'all, we are back. Monday Mental Combat. We are talking about being stationary, and that can mean a lot of things. It can mean location, family, employment, schooling, anything, anything. Being stationary. Is it good? Is it bad? It all depends. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give a few examples. A lot of these are coming from my own life experiences, and then you can kind of take it and, you know, use it if you so choose. 
right? And things I've seen from other people as well. So I just want to make sure before I put this out, what I'm going to say is not to be disrespectful of people's situations because we all grew up on different sides of the tracks, more or less. Uh, some have more than others, and that's okay. As long as you stand in the fight, you're good, right? So I don't want to say, well, you know, you left and, you know, da da da. Hey, man, everybody has a chance and a choice. So you can stay where you're at or you can grow. You could be stationary or you could be modular. It all depends. Know your situation. No one knows your situation better than you. All right. So talk about being stationary. Okay. I want to talk about myself, for example. Years ago, I worked at White Castle and I knew, even though White Castle was great, it had you know benefits and all that stuff, I knew at that age, I was still in high school when I was working at White Castle, I knew there was no way for me to do the things I want to do in life if I had stayed at White Castle. I had no desire to be anybody's manager. I had no desire to be anybody's shift leader. The only reason I worked at White Castle, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that I stayed fresh every day. We got paid every Friday. And I tell you, tell them my age, we got paid by a paycheck. You know, it wasn't that direct deposit stuff back then. That's the only thing. I used to take my money, go buy, buy me a pair of Adidas forms, go buy some used jeans. That was the actual brand used. Um, cross colors and all that, gold chains. That's all I cared about. But I knew I had an appetite for that type of stuff. And White Castle wasn't going to feed that appetite as it relates to financing the things I wanted in life. So I had to figure out another way. And growing up in Detroit, there was other ways to finance some of the things I wanted in life. But I wasn't doing that. Trust and believe. No pun intended. So I knew when I decided to enlist in, in the Marines and subsequent the Army, I knew the things that I wanted in life, whether it's material or lifestyle or whatever, I cannot get the things I wanted by one, working at White Castle and living in Detroit. Because the only way I want to do get the things I wanted, as much as I love Detroit, that's my city, that's my hometown, the things I wanted, I grew up in Detroit, but the things I wanted in life was not in Detroit. It was not, it was not there. And I remember, you know, being young and people calling me mama's boy and, you know, all this sorts of stuff. And I, I thought about a lot of that stuff growing up. How can I use all this that people are saying and use it to better my situation? You know, I grew up, I was raised right solid parents, everything, family, the whole nine, everything was good, but I didn't want to be that guy that was still at home. I don't want to be that person that was still running to the store at home. I didn't want to do that. To me, that, that is not what I wanted. I want to get away. I want to live in another state. I want to live in another country. I used to, when I was little, I used to watch like a lot of these uh, foreign films about, you know, people living in France and in Japan and all these places. I'm like, man, this world is so much bigger than where I'm currently at. It's huge. I, Damon Anderson, could not, I, I couldn't do it. Again, folks that stayed in Detroit, more power to you. No, not. As long as you're doing something constructive, you're working, you're retired, you're taking care of whatever you're doing. No, not. I am speaking from me, my situation. There's no way the things that I have achieved in life and the things I've, I've, I've had the, the chance and opportunity to earn, the relationships over the years, the mentorship, all that stuff, the material things, there is no way I can tell you there's no way I would have had any of that if I, I, I had stayed in Detroit. I know I wouldn't. Once I left, once I joined the Marines, I seen a whole nother world. I seen new possibilities. When I was discharged from the Marines, 
I missed that. And listen to Army. I seen a whole nother. The world was even broader. It was bigger. I used to read about Japan. I used to read about Germany. I used to read about Australia. I used to read about the Philippines. I touched those places. I've lived there. We vacationed there. I mean, it's, man. So that's what I'm talking about being stationary. I knew at an early age, there's no way I would achieve the things I wanted if I had to stay. I hadn't. You can look at yourself, look at the situation where if you're working at IBM, someone say, well, what do you do at IBM? Oh, well, I'm a, I work in the mail room and I hate it here. Okay, so what are we doing to advance ourselves? Well, I'm just stuck. I'm in the mail room. They won't, they won't promote me. Okay, so they won't promote you, but what are you doing to get promoted? Are you rubbing elbows with the, the key leaders, the key players, the key decision makers? Are you talking to people? Are you going to school? What are you doing? Oh, no, I ain't got time for that. Well, yeah, you do. Everyone has time. You got 24 hours out of the day, right? So with that scenario, you're being stationary. You're not going to move. You're miserable where you're at, but you're happy where you're at because now you have the license to complain about things. So you don't want to move. If you want to, if you work somewhere and all you are is a, a floor salesman or whatever, and you just, and you want to move up to that manager spot or the district leader or whatever the titles are, what are you doing to advance yourself instead of just complaining? Oh, all they got to be doing is mop on the floor. You see stories all the time where people start working at these Fortune 500 companies as janitors. Now they like marketing executives and they're pilots. They're doing all these great, wonderful things because of what? They don't want to be stationary. And a lot of people don't want to hear that, but you can get stuck, man. And you, you talk about generational curses. Being stationary sometimes is a generational curse. If you if your family was poor, no one had college, no one can read or write, and it just been passed down, passed down, passed down. You're just being stationary, you're just being stuck instead of being that outlier and saying, you know what, I'm gonna change the trajectory of this family. We're gonna get our college degrees. We're gonna make enough to have a sustainable income. We're gonna have be married. We're gonna have children. They're going to go to college. They're going to get well-paying, not jobs, but careers. So we have to ask ourselves sometimes, what are we doing? I asked myself this years ago in the 90s. What am I doing at White Castle? I'm cleaning this freaking parking lot. I'm making French fries. I'm doing all this. Again, this is no knock to anybody. I am talking from my lens, speaking from my lens. This is what I envisioned, right? There's no way. I got tired of doing that. I hated catching that freaking schoolcraft bus to White Castle. Couldn't stand it. But I knew I had to do something. I had to leave. Even talk about when I was a recruiter. I went back to Detroit as a recruiter. And I had the same energy about, you know, being not being stationary, being mobile, being modular. It's so many people used to come in our recruiting station. In the Army, they have quarters where so many um, contracts for active duty, they want so many contracts for reserves. So whenever there was like a married couple or a single person, whoever, and they already had a great job, nice paying job, benefits the whole nine, but they say, you know what, I just want to serve. I would try to, you know, move those guys and gals towards the reserves because they already have a sustainable career, not a job, have a career, and they just want to serve. Thumbs up. But if you walked into our recruiting station, right, you was a young uh, male, male or female, 18, 19, 20, you was still living at home with your mother, you know, you ain't doing a lot for yourself. You got a low, a low wage paying job and you come in our recruiting station talking about, I want to go to the reserves. No. And I know that defied, you know, the recruiting laws and, you know, we got in trouble for a lot of that stuff, but I'm here to tell you, man, no, you're not going to the freaking reserves. Cause you know, what's going to happen. You working at Burger King right now, making X amount of dollars 
an hour that's not doing anything for you. You're not going to school. So all you're going to do is get your butt on the bus. You're going to go down to freaking basic training. You're going to go to freaking AIT. And what you're going to do, you're going to come right back and you're going to do the same freaking thing. No, you're going to go freaking active duty. You're going to have an opportunity to get your freaking degree. I mean, you could do that in the reserves too, but have the opportunity to get your freaking degree. Just do it for four years. Go get your freaking degree. Have an opportunity to live somewhere outside of the city where you grew up in. Have an opportunity to live in the country outside of the country that you grew up in. You have, everyone has a chance and a choice. I've said it, I've said it, and I will say it again. I would tell those, man, look, when you go on active duty, oh, you know, I don't want to, I want to leave my mom. I don't want to leave. Look, man, got it, thumbs up. But at some point, you have to live your life. Now, I understand some people's the situations are different. Some people, you know, have older parents. They got to take care of them. Again, I'm talking about the things that I've seen, especially in that recruiting element. And I know a lot of these people came from broken homes, and the homes were just bad. There's no way that you would have been a productive citizen just going through that and then to come back to where you live. You're going to fall into the same traps. That's how I know. And I tell people all the time, I'm not telling you because I'm guessing. I'm telling you because I know being stationary in some instances is not good for you. If you continue to complain and woe is me and you don't know how this situation happened, what are we doing to change our situation? How can we change it? First, you got to figure out how did it get there? How did the situation get there to the point I can't move? Okay. Now you know, what is my plan? What plan can I implement to get me out of this situation? Who are those trusted confidants that can help me? Maybe I need to start networking. Everyone has a phone. You can do so much with those phones. Everyone on social media, they go to Facebook. Oh, I'm putting pictures on Instagram. Who are you trying to connect to to help you get out the situation? You talk about people that's being hungry. They ain't talking about food hungry. They want things in life because they don't want to be stationary. What are you doing? You work at an auto plant. Are we trying to, are we trying to just be the guy to just put the car together again? I'm just talking, right? Let's be that manager. Let's be something else. Again, if you're comfortable where you are, this is not for the people that's comfortable. I'm talking about for the person that wants that challenge in life. What can I do? What contribution can I make to not only myself, my family, and society? How are you going to mentor somebody if you ain't done nothing, if you ain't seen nothing, if you ain't heard nothing, if you ain't been through nothing? And I know I'm a little emotional one on this one, but this one, because I've seen the benefits of me leaving Detroit. I live it. None of this stuff I would have had if I had stayed there. I'm telling you. I've been married almost 25 years. Two children. I'm retired. Life is good, man. But would I have had that if I had stayed in Detroit? I don't think I would. I know I wouldn't. Again, much as I love my city, man, and the people that's there, for me, Damon Anderson. I couldn't have done it. The things I wanted was not in Detroit. I want to live overseas. I checked that block. I wanted to at least have a bachelor's degree. I checked that block. When I left, when I got discharged from the Marines, I told my wife, I said, you know what? There's three things I want to accomplish when I join the army. I'm not just going to be the one guy that's just chilling in the military and not doing anything, right? I wanted to at least have a bachelor's degree, block check. I want to at least, at least earn the rank of master sergeant, block check. And I want to be a freaking recruiter, block check. Because I knew if the army approve my recruiting packet and I can get in there and I can talk to these men and women along with the other folks in my recruiting station. We could change people. 
We can stop you from having that stagnant mindset. We talking about upward mobility, that vision to be able to move vertically. That's what it's all about. So as much as every, we all complain about our situations, what are we doing to improve our situations? Are we staying up late and trying to do go to school? Are we looking for that next career? And if you not if you don't have the experience, if you don't have anything available to bring to the next career, what are we doing? Are we challenging ourselves? Are we talking with the right people? Are we just hanging out on the corner, just chilling? Nah, man, you know, I work at the car wash. I'm good. No, you're not good because you're stationary. You're not moving. You got to move. Now, if you live in hometown USA and you're doing things in life and you got businesses and you got all this stuff going on, I rock with you. This is more for people that's not doing anything. You were not born to do nothing you have to do something you have to and again i know i'm passionate i'm showing a little more passion in this than the other videos because i know man i've been there i've helped people people have helped me i've been i've been blessed to be around wise people to say you may not want to do that how about this look at my life I listened to people. I watched people. I understood when people was telling me, hey, you may want to change the trajectory on this. Change your way of thinking on this. You may want to move this way. I listened to that. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful I was around a lot of smart people. And that's even, even in the military. I knew when I joined the military, when I joined the Marines, I went from a private to a corporal. When I get discharged from the Marines, when I joined the Army, something happened with my paperwork. I was a daggone PFC. And I'm like, hold on. I just graduated freaking corporal's course in the Marine Corps. But the Army saw me as a PFC. The recruiter did whatever he did. At the point, I didn't care. I raised my hand. I'm back in the service. But I knew when I told my wife, when I after that day, I enlisted in the Army. And I found out, okay, you're a PFC. You ain't got to do base training and all that stuff. But you're a PFC in the Army. I told her, I said, I will at least, at the very least, make the rank of Master Sergeant. At the very least. And it took a lot of work, man. I'm talking about staying late at night doing all these correspondence courses. I'm talking about staying up doing all these classes. I'm talking about staying up writing all these papers for an associate's degree. I'm talking about staying up, doing all this stuff for a bachelor's degree. I'm talking about going TDY away from my family to go to some of these leadership schools. I'm talking about every freaking thing I had to do. And if I didn't have that support system with well, my wife and my kids, there's no way I could have done that. So definitely props, props to them on that. But I knew I would, I didn't want to just get out the Marines, serve four years in the Marines and then join the army and just hang out. I wasn't there to hang out. I wasn't there to hang out. I was hungry because I didn't want to be stationary. I don't want to be just this regular dude who's just chilling. Again, I'm speaking from my own situation. Do not take offense to this. If you're offended, I'm speaking from my own. But I knew there was things I want to do. And one of the reasons I want to be a recruiter because a chance to change people's lives. And the way that army recruiter messed up my paperwork, they gave me the fuel, man. I could do something better than he did. I can help people. He didn't help me. He just freaking just enlisted me. Right? There was no mentorship with the recruiter when I joined the army. He was like, here, sign here. Hey, you going to Germany. But the recruiters that was in my recruiting station when I recruited in Detroit, we was in this, these people's lives, man. These, they will tell you this. We was in their lives, man. We knew where they, where they went to school, where they worked, who their friends were, who they hung out with, where they hung out. We knew all of that because we was trying to change them from being stationary. And that's the whole point of this. 
no matter where you are in life, no matter where you are in life, whether it's military, private sector, you can't be stationary. And stationary can be location, geographical location. It could be how much money you're making. It could be upward mobility with respect to your occupation. It could be any, it could be relationships. If you're in a bad relationship, are you just standing there because things are good in, in physical terms? What are you doing? You have to have courage in yourself. Have that courage to say, you know what? I'm standing out on my faith because only you can trust you. If you're in a bad relationship, find something better. If you're in that bad job and you hate your job, find something better. Find out, find something better and find out what you need to do to ensure you are a valued member of the team. It's all about value. But don't be stationary. Don't be stagnant. You can't be. It's a lot of people have moved around. You look at a lot of these news people and they move every three years, even like those in the military. We move every three years, so on and so forth. We're not being stationary. That's the reason why they move you X amount of years. So you're not stagnant and you get stuck. But a lot of us, we just got stuck. Oh, I grew up in hometown USA. I grew up in Scootersville. My whole family here. I don't want to leave them. But are you happy? Because you're stationary. I'm telling you, man, I would go to my grave saying, I am so thankful that I did not stay where I was at. Because the things I wanted in life was not where I was at. I wanted a lot, man. And I achieved a lot of that. But I'm telling you, being stationary in that instance, relationship, occupation, anything, don't allow things to stunt your growth. We all have a chance and a choice in life. Again, I'm, I'm emphatic about this because I know the benefits of the term nomad moving around all the time, right? But I was moving around to better places, to different things being around different people so you have to challenge yourself I challenge myself you have to challenge yourself and I'm thankful I had the, the great support system and my wife and my kids because all this stuff I wouldn't have accomplished without them and also the mentors in my life all the, the SAR majors the master sergeants the master gunnery sergeants the colonels all these guys everyone has helped me Guys and gals, let me exclude anyone. All the men and women that's helped me over the years. And they taught me, never be stationary. Don't be happy where you at. Because there's always something better. Always something better. I'm going to end it right there because it's like I'm sweating. It's like early in the morning. I worked out this morning. Now I'm going to have to burn some more. Burn some more calories. Um. Again, just appreciate everything. Today's message was just about being stationary. Uh, don't be stationary, man. But at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. Okay? Uh, appreciate all the love and support. Again, you can find me YouTube if you want the visual version at Retired Master Sergeant 20. Uh, for the audio version, you can go to Spotify, Apple, Podcast Chaser, Podcast Addict, Geo Saving. Spreaker, to name a few. Uh, tomorrow's episode, we're going to talk about do we really miss the old school? So that's for talking on the Tuesday. Do we really miss the old school? So, so appreciate everybody. This is the Trust and Believe no, Nomad Cast signing off on a Monday Mental Combat Day. And I appreciate everything, y'all. See y'all tomorrow for talking on the Tuesday. The subject is do we really miss the old school? Peace and love, y'all.